Hey guys, today we're looking at a model of marriage, a model of marriage according to scripture and according to the ancient Hebrew and according to Jesus Christ, who's the groom and his bride. Okay, so that's what this is all based on. So let's just take a little look here at what we have here. So here's our marriage model. This is a, a picture of Christ up here. Okay, and you'll notice the husband is over here, the wife is over here, the children are down here. Now, first thing we want to look at is, let me just read two scriptures real quick to just reinforce what I just said that this was based on. Ephesians 5, 28 and 29. Even so, husbands should love their wives, being in a sense their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. Do you hear that? 29, for no man ever hated his own flesh. But what does he do? He nourishes it. He carefully protects it and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Okay, so let's look at Christ. He's up here and here's the husband and the wife. Notice that the husband is the head. The wife is the body. So if we're going to go on those two verses... We're going to see that Christ here is giving his love, his approval, his ideas, his peace, his comfort, his reassurance, his fatherhood, if this husband has never had a good father or a good model. Um, and by the way, if you've never had a, a male a mentor, if you are kind of feel fatherless like I did, you may want to get some older men to support you in your husbandry and your fatherhood because that can be lacking. But he, this husband here is getting everything he needs from Christ, and he's learning how to receive from Christ more and more so that he can receive this love that this head is to have for this body. And the more love and comfort and um, understanding and patience and everything that this husband can receive from Christ, he is to give that to his wife as much as he can. And it may be just a little trickle at first. He may not be uh, very practiced in this and experienced, and it may just be a little trickle every now and then. But over the years, he should learn to receive from Christ and let don't just receive it and take it, but receive it and pass it on to your wife. Okay? And so Christ is ascending this love and giving this love, and the husband is receiving it. He's the head. So what does the scripture say that the head does with the body? Even so, husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. See, the head and the body are the same. It's the same body. So the head loves the body because the body enables the head to walk around and be healthy and do all the things he needs to do. So when you don't love your wife, do you know what you're doing? You're fighting God. You're declaring war on Almighty God. And guess what's going to happen? I've told you in so many videos, if you've watched any of the others, it's not going to be pretty. Verse 29 says, For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it. So because Christ loves the church, and the husband is Christ, the head, and the wife is the church, the body, Christ loves the church, the head loves the body, the husband loves the wife. It's all the same flow, all the same type of thing. So this love is flowing from Christ to the husband, and slowly he is coming over here and giving her this love. Tell me what, um, this is a big blockage for a lot of people, and if you, any of you are husbands out there, this may help you. But what is the husband depending on to love his wife? What if she's... Um, you know, in a bad mood? Or what if she is an emotional woman and just snaps at you? What if she says something that hurts your feelings? What if she says something disrespectful to you? What if she is having a hormonal month and is just seems like a crazy woman to you? Does that have any bearing at all on whether you love her or not? Any bearing at all? You know how much bearing it has? Zero. Zero. Why? Because you're not getting love from her. The scripture doesn't say you're to get love from your wife. 
It says you are to get love from Christ. That's where you get all your energy and everything you need in the entire universe is from Him. He's your covering and He will give you whatever you need according to His riches and glory. And He knows you need to love your wife because He's told you to do that. See, So He will give you what you need as the head to love her. And what are you dependent on in loving your wife? You're not dependent on her, that's for sure. No, you're dependent on the Lord. And if He's on the throne then you're going to be fine. If he's on the throne, you're going to have everything you need. If he's on the throne, he's going to show you what to do. You do not depend on your wife. It has nothing to do with your wife. She can have the worst day. She can be rude to you. She can be having an affair. She can be, uh, you know, and that and you can get to the place where that won't even affect you or it will minimally affect you because here is your supply coming all the time and you're depending on the rock. And the rock isn't going anywhere. So the more you depend on him, the more you'll be able to love your wife. That head will be able to love that body who is himself more and more and more. And that's one of the main points I want to make in this video is your wife has nothing to do with you loving her. You loving her is between you and the Lord. He's told you to do it. He'll equip you to do it. And he'll enable you to do it. He'll cause you to do it when you depend on him more and more. It's not black and white. It's progressive. Okay, so I don't want to hear any excuses from any husbands saying, well, my wife was in a bad mood, or oh, well, she's just boring to me, or she's too domineering, or she's da-da-da-da-da. That is not the issue. The issue is loving her. Okay, now we're going to talk about boundaries in a minute, and the boundaries may apply to some of the things I just mentioned. But, so here's the cycle of loving the wife. That's where these big arrows are for. The most love is coming and the energy is coming to you to support you. And then there's more coming to the wife from you. Now, as this cycle goes on, the more you receive from the Lord, the more there's a potential here. These little dots are potential love that you're going to start loving him. When he gives you love, you can start to love him with that agape love. Our own human love is insufficient. We don't know how to love God. He has to pour his love into us, and then we can love him. And that's where 1 John 4, 19 comes in. It says we love because he first loved us. That is why and how and the only reason that we can ever love at all. Because he first loved us. And this is the position of the husband. He is the head. Christ is the head. We love because he loved us. The husband is the head. She will love because he first loved her. See, it all starts and is continued and is sustained by the husband. That's why I always say that, you know, when the husband isn't doing right, the whole family can go bonkers. But once he gets in line, even if the wife is still kind of crazy, there's just this, um, Something is different. There's this peace and there's this uh, supernatural covering over the family when the husband is doing what he's told to do. So, but this, uh, these dots here are the potential of the husband starting to love Christ and worshiping in spirit and truth. When he receives this agape love from the Lord, it goes back like this and there's a continual cycle going. Then, as he's giving his love to his wife, loving her, helping her calm down, loving her even if he's annoyed with her or whatever, this love from her and this respect, of course, uh, more than the love, is coming to the husband potentially. See, the more he loves her through thick and thin, all the good days, the bad days, the more that respect for him is going to build because she's going to see him as a rock. Not someone that's attacking her, not someone that's blaming her, not someone that's abandoning her, not someone that's judging her, but someone that's loving her. And see, when you're a wife and your husband is loving you, I mean, you can't help but cooperate and submit and give him all of the perks that a husband deserves, that a loving husband deserves. So this cycle can be built. A husband loving his wife, she can come back with that same agape in such respect. And, oh, you don't know all the good things that could be coming your way. So, and so this cycle's going. Then you get this one going. And then the wife, though, 
you are not responsible for your wife's relationship with the Lord, although you're supposed to kind of build her up and encourage that. She has to choose on her own to receive love from Christ, to receive support from Christ. And in the way that you have this agape loop going, she can receive from him and have this agape loop going, potentially. And I put two question marks there, and it doesn't matter if she's not, because if you do what you're supposed to do, the whole family will work out. You will not believe the blessings that God will give you. And then as this is going, and this starts going, and this potentially is going, then the husband and the wife can love the children, especially that first one, and teach them to love the younger one, and then that one to love the younger one, and, and there can be love between them kind of in a cycle there, and you can kind of lovingly train them to care for and love one another, and it's hard when they're, they have personalities that really conflict, but um, the Lord will show you what to do, because even when you have a great marriage and your kids are always fighting, it, it can just be so awful. So the goal is to have this agape flow going. That's the first thing. Um, second thing I want you to notice over here with this husband is this is a coffin right here. This is a coffin, and that's the husband in the coffin right there. And why, why do I have a coffin there? Well, there's a cross up there because a death has happened. Colossians 2.11, the husband has submitted to, agreed with, and submitted to, and asked the Lord to make this a reality, experiential reality in his life, and he's willing to do whatever is necessary for that to happen, because his old nature, his old man, his sinful state has been supernaturally circumcised off of him, and that old self is in this coffin here. See, if you even want to go have a mock funeral for yourself, you can do that, or you can plant a tree, or do something to recognize that your life is over, that I'm here to serve the Lord, and as crazy as it may look, or as wonderful, or whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm doing what he's leading me to do. So this is the husband in the coffin, the old man. The real husband here is the new nature. See, the new nature receives from Christ because the new nature knows that Christ is his life source. That's all he does is receive from the head from Christ, who is the head, so that he can be the head of this family. So let's read um, Ephesians 5.29 again. No one ever hated his own body. That's just something that <clears throat> the Lord has built into us to take care of ourselves. It's an instinct. If you've ever been in danger of dying, your instinct went away from whatever the danger was, because it's an instinct to live and to survive and take care of yourself. So no one's ever hated his own body, but what does he? what do you do with your body? You feed it. You give it healthy food. You care for it. So it will grow strong because you live inside it. It's the only body you're ever going to have on this earth. So if you don't take care of it, you're going to reap what you sow in 5, 10, 20 years. And so you don't want to do that. There's already enough stuff coming against us in this world. We don't want to be contributing to our own suffering. So he feeds and cares for his body for it as it is as Christ does the church. So this one is feeding and caring for his own body and this one is right here. The one he's talking about is the husband. The husband feeds his body he cares for his body. That's what this energy is going toward her because the husband is caring for himself. How is that himself? Well, let's look over here. If Christ is the head and we, the bride of Christ, are his body, then the self, that is the husband, is not the old nature anymore. The old nature is dead, remember? Remember? Colossians 2.11, the self is the new nature. The wife is you. See, the wife is your body. The wife is your body. Yourself is not your body. Yourself is the head, the new nature, the head. And your body is connected to her body, but you're just the head. And you need the rest of all the organs and limbs and everything to be able to function. So you want to go toward her, work with her, not fight God, and love that body because she is your body. Your wife is your body. 
Okay, I want you to forget about your own head and body and think of yourself as just a head. And that a head severed from the body, what good is that going to do? Right? Think about that. Have you ever seen a picture of that? Well, it's not a pretty sight. So think about that. If you ever need a reminder of, am I, I'm supposed to be loving my wife, think of a head severed from a body because that's what you're doing and you're fighting God. So let the head and the uh, body come together and feed and nourish and care for that body. Okay? Because you're going to reap what you sow. Even if it is impossible to do, that's a great thing because we serve the God of the impossible. And you can say, Lord, I can't do this. I know that I can't do it. And I think we both know that I can't do it. So could you please, as I surrender and say, belly up, I can't do this and I can't deal with this. Would you please fill me to love this woman? I don't know how to love her. And let's get into that real quick. So but this is a quick picture of a husband feeding and caring for the wife and um, the head caring for the body. But let's look at the um, kind of some of the main purposes and functions of the husband is, like we said before, is to receive love from Christ. That is your main goal as a husband. Because if you don't have the love of Christ in you, you just have your own human resources. And that's sad and that can be scary because... You know, we're so damaged and wounded and broken. And some of us didn't even bond with our parents. Some of us only had one parent. Some of us were raised in an orphanage. You know, we don't have all this other stuff that we need. So, but what we always do have is Christ. And we can always depend on him. So it doesn't matter about your history. It doesn't matter what parents you had and, and all that. Because you have everything you need now. It's just the, the focus is to unplug from all the stuff that doesn't matter and plug into what does matter, and that's Christ. See, we, we thought that our parents were God. And so if our parents abandoned us or rejected us, we thought, we internalized and, and, and inferred, oh, that means I'm worthless or I'm worthy to be abandoned. But we didn't know when we were little that those that wasn't God. My mom and my dad weren't God. See? But now we do know who's God. See, the Lord is our God, and he gives us everything. He accepts us, receives us, loves us, protects us. But see, now we can see our parents in a new light. Oh, they were never God. I just thought they were, and I inferred all these lies from them. But that doesn't apply anymore, because here's my source. So receive love from Christ. Number two, give that love to your wife. Now, you need to get to know your wife on a personal level. One husband loving his wife and then if she dies and he marries another woman if he loves the new wife the way he did the old one it may just be terrible because it's a totally different woman we all have things in common but we're very different so learn how to love her on a personal level what does she need from you what does she need i need for my husband for him to touch me okay for so many years he wouldn't touch me and it just made me crazy so now we hold hands and when he sits beside me he puts his hand on my leg and i feel good i feel comforted by that and so you know that's just one thing and but because he's doing that now our relationship is different there's not this funky tension there anymore because he's doing what he's supposed to do so in, in saying this the love your wife in a personalized way Get to know her. Get to know her history. Get to know her temperament. Do the Myers-Briggs free temperament um, test online and figure out her wiring. Figure out what she likes, what she doesn't like. And then in, in this process, it's progressive. And you will be learning about her for the rest of your life. Let it be a part-time job to learn about your wife and to learn to love her. And the Lord will give you the desire for this. He will equip you for it. And he'll give you the wisdom and lead you to things that you never had any idea about. Because he wants you to succeed in this. He's got your back in this. Because this is his whole idea. He started it. We didn't start it. I didn't make it up. It's his idea. So you have all the support in the universe from the Most High God for everything you need for this. See, he's on your side. So you receive love from Christ. You give that love to her on a personalized level. And you must be willing to have uh, give uh, receive feedback from her. I would always advise, her, advise husbands to say, um, and my husband does this a lot now, um, I need you to tell me when something is not right. I want that feedback. I want that feedback from you. And so he says, thank you for the feedback. 
even if I'm upset about something and I say, no, 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 he's like, okay, thank you for the feedback. He just sees it as information that he's going to apply in the future to know what not to do next time. So it's just like a data point. And I give him data a lot. And, and I don't have to do it that much anymore because he's actually doing and cooperating and applying what I've told him. So you receive the love from Christ. Give that love to your wife. It's personal. It's progressive. You must use boundaries with your wife. You are not, not, not to try to control her. Controlling your wife is witchcraft. Okay? That's not what the scripture teaches us. The scripture teaches us self-control, not control of others. And I'm going to do a video on that. But you want to use boundaries with your wife because her issues are her issues. Your issues are your issues. You have separate issues, a lot of them. And when you come together, some of those will clash and cause problems that become problems for both of you. But you have to figure out which ones are yours, which ones are hers, and, you know, let your issues be yours and hers be hers. And if you need help with the coming together on them, then you can try to work it out on your own. You can find things online to help you, videos, or you can go uh, come see a counselor or whoever to help you. Hold your hand, walk you through it. Someone who has experience with this. So and number four, your job as a husband is not to make your wife happy. That is not your job. Your job is just to love her. She may be having a terrible week, a terrible year. She may be in menopause. She may be getting her butt kicked with menopause, okay? I was that woman. So, but your job is not to make her happy. Your job is just to love her. Her own happiness and her own uh, contentment will come from her own relationship with the Lord, okay? You are not responsible to make her happy. And don't take that burden on. Number five, the marital burden is on if any of you husbands out there are listening, you. The marital burden is on you, okay? It is on the, the husband. And again, that burden is not that big of a burden because who is backing you? The king of the universe is on your side. And he has told you to do this because you don't know what to do as a husband. So he's told you what to do with this wife. What do I do with this woman? She's crazy. I don't understand her. What am I going to do? Love her. Love her. Love her. Receive love from Christ and love her. Okay? So all of this going on is all dependent on the Lord. See? And he's not going anywhere. And if he's on the throne, you're going to be okay. And if he's still on the throne, you're going to be receiving something about how to love her. And even if it's just to sit and quietly listen to her while she has a meltdown, that is a beautiful thing. That is wonderful. Um, okay, for the wife. Any wives out there? Your job is to communicate your love. Um, communicate your uh, uh, for how the husband to love you to him. Communicate your love needs to your husband is what I'm trying to say. Communicate. Tell him. If you need to write it down, you can do that. Um, hopefully he will be receptive to that if he is God's man and wants to learn to love you. Um, and if he doesn't do it, you know, don't beat him up. Don't um, yell at him. Don't be ugly. Just wait till it's a better time and say, you know, I really like it if you would do this. You know, I, I, we've mentioned this before. So could you please, you know, just, just try to be respectful. If you're upset, go take a break. But, but communicate those needs of how he needs to love you and the needs of your heart in the marriage relationship. Learn to receive love from your husband as he learns to receive love from God and starts to give you the love, even if you've never been loved. See, I was never loved, so it took me a long time to do that. Um, but you will start to receive from him. A little bit at a time, just like he receives from the Lord and loves you a little at a time, you'll learn to receive a little at a time. This is all progressive, okay? You must use boundaries with your husband. Your, your husband is not to control you, and if he's trying to, you need to say, you know, we have a problem. Your job is not to control me. I see a controlling spirit in you. Da -da -da -da, whatever you need to say, just speak the truth in love. And he has to deal with that problem. It's not your problem. But, like I said with the husband, um, you need to know what your pro what your issues are, what his issues are. They're separate, and then you have some that are together. Okay, so try to get that um, 
just boundary there because it simplifies everything. When he goes off and does something crazy, you can just say, well, that's not my issue. And wherever that's affecting me, I can put a boundary there so that it doesn't impact me. He will reap what he sows, and so you just reap what you sow. And same for the husband. As much as possible, try to be respectful to your husband. Men, most men need respect. My husband does not need respect. <laughs> he just doesn't care. As long as I give him the information, he doesn't care how I give it to him. So that is strange, but it's true. But most men need respect to be able to receive things. But they are going to have to learn that they're, they're not dependent on their wives. They're dependent on the Lord. So whenever their wife isn't respectful, which is going to happen, they need to have a place in them that just says, hey, you know, I'm dependent on the Lord so she can be a psycho and I'm going to be fine, but I'm going to get this information so that this doesn't happen again. Something like that, okay? So you want to try to be respectful, wives, as much as you can. If you're upset, take a break and then come back later. And again, your job, just like this, the husband's, not the husband's job to make the wife happy. It's not the wife's job to make the husband's ha husband happy. It's not, no. Your own happiness is your own responsibility and you have to get that from the Lord. And if you are miserable, that's your responsibility. Your own misery is your own responsibility. It goes for husbands and wives. Okay, so I don't want this to be too long, but this is just a model that I use, and I add other things in sometimes, but this is kind of just a base that I go on because it's just from the scriptures and the ancient Hebrew, and it works. It works, y'all. Why? Because guess who thought of it? The Lord. We didn't think of it. I didn't think of it. It's not from some psychology book. It's from the scriptures. So this script, these scriptures are equal in us to our DNA. See, so when we start applying this stuff, it works in and through us. It's alive and active and it affects us in our heart, in our soul, in our minds, and even eventually comes out in your body. It's amazing. Okay, so um, let's read Ephesians 5, uh, 28 and 29 one more time. Even so, husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. Remember, your wife is your body. He who loves his own wife is loving himself. So when you love your wife, you are going to get such good reaping. You're going to reap so many good things. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Okay, so I hope this is helpful, and I hope you guys have a blessed week, and I pray that you would remember some of these things that I've said, and you would take them to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to make these things a reality in my life. I don't want to just talk about a verse and then go live my life. No, we want to eat it like food and make it a reality in our lives, and the Holy Spirit will do this as we submit to Him, and as we depend on Him, and as we are confident in Him and what He says, that He is on our side. And he's not condemning us and he's not nitpicking us and trying to figure out and, and judge the things that we don't do well. He's very gracious and very loving and he just wants to help us so we can depend on him more and our lives will get easier. All right. So I'll see you guys soon. Y'all have a great week.